I'm cutting right to the punch. The KG Q10H is totally fixed. Here's a brief synopsis of what I found. Pass, that's a pass. Uh, that is a pass, it looks like. That's a pass. As per FTC requirements, that is a pass. Wow. If um, you'd like to hear my whole explanation of what's going on here, well, stay tuned. I'm going to get into it. But after my first video review for this radio, remember mine had a different color, not this black one, I found, along with some other YouTubers like Ham Radio Dude, that this radio created spurious emissions on basically every frequency. It did not meet the FCC rules governing dirty radios. And what does that mean in a nutshell? If I'm transmitting on 146.520, which is the national FM calling frequency, then this radio would simultaneously be transmitting on its harmonics up and down, higher and lower on that frequency. Meaning, while you were transmitting in one place, you were also transmitting everywhere else. This could create interference, obviously, with not just ham radio operators, but first responders and multiple other radio services. A big no-no. Well, when I, we brought this up with Buy 2 a Radio with Danny, he reached out to Wushun. Wushun did the right thing, and they fixed these radios. And now I can say, yes, they are working as expected. And I'd like to show you what my tests were. If you'd like to see my full review, though, on the capabilities of this radio, all the feature sets, everything I liked about this radio is still accurate. You just get to omit the part where I say that it's not meeting the FCC standards. Oh, and if you were on the fence about buying one of these, you can go take the link in the description to buy 2A Radio. Thanks again, Danny, for sending this over. Yes, that is an affiliate link, but... Now that we got the bugs out of it, I can emphatically say I really like this radio. I love the feature set from the get-go and the fact that now it's a clean transmitter, even better. Let's go off to the tabletop and we'll talk all about it. I'm already kind of excited. <laughs> Wushun, here's stop. This is the programming of this. Two meter calling, 70s meter calling, 220 calling, six meter calling. They put this into the radio and then it looks like it goes into what is this weather we need to know if this bad boy has got the emissions or not so we're going to hook it up to my tiny sa ultra and do a test all right so we have two meter calling frequency on our radio we have our tiny sa ultra set for transmit two meter calling frequency on both and where are we at so fundamental frequency is at zero, and you have 10, 20, 30, 40 dB suppression to the closest harmonic. Pass, that's a pass. All right, here's our test for 70 centimeters. Got to hold on to this because we're in ultra mode with an upper level of 3.9 gigahertz here. So we got to give it a second. Okay, there we go. Give it a minute, we'll let it go a couple of times. You maybe won't be able to see it, but to be able to calculate into the gigahertz, it, it takes a device like this a little while. We have max hold turned on, so it's going to hang on to this for us so we can get a test result. Okay, so uh, first frequency is 446, about it's registering 449, so there could be some internal interference, but anyway, not really the point. Third fundamental, though, or third harmonic is 890 at a negative 44.6 db so that is a pass good stuff all right we're reset for 220 the 1.25 meter band fundamental frequency is going to get up to about negative 20 db and yeah we're right at zero so we're we've got 10 watt 40 db attenuator on here and there are no spurious emissions on any of the harmonics of that fundamental frequency and it is right on 223.5, close enough for uh, calling frequency. That's a pass. Now, the last one, six meters, we should be around here. So max hold run on this is, <laughs> yeah. So the fundamental frequency is at 52.52.5 megahertz. And you have a first spur, which is at the two spot right here. You, that is 52.4 at negative 49 dB. So that is a pass as per as per FTC requirements, that is a pass. Wow, um, 
that's pretty awesome. I'm, I'm happy, I'm happy. Now, before we get to that delightful power test that you all wanna see what the power output is for all this, why don't we test the receiver on this thing? So we've got a 40 dB attenuator and we're gonna turn on the signal generator. Squelch is off. We can hear it at, at negative a 79 dB, give or take. You can hear it at 85 dB, so that's a negative, uh, negative 125 dB. Barely hear it at 90, so that gets you a full 130 negative dB down into the noise that this can run. Yes, squelch is off, so we're just testing the receiver, so you kind of have to have a keen ear, and, uh, and I gotta get that off there because it's making the screen too hard to record. Bye-bye. Ninety point six dB down, which is one hundred negative one hundred thirty dB. We can still hear it. I still hear it at ninety two. Can you hear it? In the noise, but it's there. You hear it? All right. Wow, still 92.4, I can hear it. So that's, that's 132.4 dB down to the noise, this is hearing. That's very, very good. And lastly, And I can hear it down there as well. Still down into the noise. 90, negative 92.4. Let's see if we can actually lower than that. Still down there, not as, not easy a copy, but it's there. Wow, pretty good. Great, actually. By the way, if you're interested in doing this kind of testing on your radios, verifying what they say is true is true, then uh, go check out the video that I just did on the Tiny SA Ultra. These are available on Amazon. I'll post a link as well as to my, my FARS meter. Uh, this is a Latinx, a 125 to 525 megahertz, 120 watt VHF UHF power meter. That, that'll get you the power meter, but if you want it to be a true fars meter 2000 calibrated, uh, you have to talk to not a Rubicon, a friend of mine here on YouTube. Anyway, let me show you how to do this power test because it, it, it couldn't be any easier. And, and honestly, everybody should do power tests with their radios. I, I don't care what anybody says. Take your radio, right? Get your connection to it, however you got to do that. You believe I had another guy tell me that like, we shouldn't really bother with doing these tests that we should just kind of trust the manufacturers. Um, that's, that's crazy talk to me, uh, but you know, I don't know. Anyway, I like to do these tests because it tells me, one, it's true, it gives me something to make a video about, but it, it tells me which uh, manufacturers are the ones that deserve my money, which are the manufacturers that I should support because they say the, they, they say the things they're gonna do and then they actually achieve them by doing them, right? It's, it's one thing to talk a big game, but it's another thing to actually go out there and achieve it. And stating out on paper, or on your website what your radio is going to do and perform like, but then not being able to do it is kind of a bummer. So we're going to see some fluctuations here, is my bet. In fact, I expect, fully expect that 2 meters and 70 centimeters are going to be our, our rock stars, 50 megahertz and 6 meters, and 1.25 meters or 220 megahertz are going to be a little on the low side. So all I do is have a SMA plugged in, we have a dummy load on the back end, we're going to look up here for the power output, let's transmit and we're getting about a watt, one watt. Technically, this is outside this meter's capability, so at the end of this, I'll, I'll wrap up with looking at another meter just to cross-check. This meter really only goes down to 100-something megahertz, so keep that in mind. Let's go back over to memory channel mode, 70 centimeter calling, let's go ahead and PTT that. And you're seeing we got 5.2 watts in the corner there. Good. Next one. Two meter calling. 3.46, so a little low. Uh, we, were, we would expect to aim for two meters. That would kind of be what I would like to see there, but not out of completely out of the realm of expectation. And then 220 or 1.25 meters. 
is 2.775 watts output. I expect this to be low. So it's about what I expect. I'm, I'm glad to see 70 centimeters is going strong at over five. It would be nice if two meters was at, at four watts to compete against things like, you know, the, the cheap Chinese junk that you should not be buying. This is not an inexpensive radio. This is a more expensive radio, but I'd much rather you buy one of these than one of these spurious talk bombs that, again, put your frequencies out all over the place. And what are we comparing it to? Well, we're kind of comparing it to things like this FT60. The beginner radio, this is a more advanced radio, but the prices are a little bit different. So, yeah. I needed an excuse to get my novelty MFJ meter out. So at 20 watts, we got this thing set to the 20 watt setting. So we're looking at this bottom number, ignore the arrow. A little less than a watt on, uh, on six meters. Nah, that's about what I expected. Let me see, are we calibrated? Again, the most detailed calibration job. Eh, about one. Uh, are we on power? So historically, I've always liked Wushun and the radios they produced. It is the middle tier of amateur radios. It's kind of in that spot where you'd find the Yesu FT60, a really good beginner radio as well. But this bad boy, quad band and cross band repeat. Very few radios will do that. It's still a very interesting feature set. And as we already pointed out, USB-C on the body. Who? Nelly, you know we like that. Anyway, go watch my video review of this. Uh, I can't go into more words than I've already said on that video. I'll just say I really, I'm not kiddingly, not joking, really like this radio. Period. End of story. If you are on the fence and you want a quad band radio or you want something that does 1.25 meters in a handheld, this is it. This is it, guys. So thanks so much for watching. Leave your comments below and I'll talk to you later. 73.